Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. And today we're going to solve a nail design question. Okay, this is still part of our strengths to, uh, strengths and materials two or advanced strengths and materials uh, section. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to answer a couple questions based on uh, nails uh, joining the flange and the web of a beam, as I've written here. And, uh, you know, the beam is going to be subjected to some force, or some shear force and all the nails are as well. And we are going to determine the spacing of the nails and we're gonna determine the shear force transferred by the nails to the flange of the, uh, uh, to the web, okay? So uh, that's just a general overview. Uh, let's look at the first question. Find the shear force transferred by the nails from flange to web in a 12 inch length of the beam. Okay, so what, what are they asking for here? Now they're asking for the shear force transferred, so uh, if we remember what a shear force is, okay, a shear force is, is when we have a force that's generated, it's going in opposite directions, okay? A shear force is something where we have maybe perhaps two blocks or something like this. That's an example of a shear force, okay? So in this case, we have a shear force uh, between the flange and the web, okay? And it's going to act on this joint here, and more specifically on the nails. And we're gonna to need to find out whether or not the nails can support that shear force without failing. All right, and that's a big, uh, that's a big one. I mean, we don't want nails failing in uh, our structures or our supports or our connections, so. All right, uh, let's take a look. How do we solve this? Well, we're given a little bit of information that I haven't written down. I just wanted to kind of go over it with you. All right, so we're given that the flanges of the beam are fastened to the web, okay, with nails that can safely transmit a shear force of 50 pounds, okay? So the maximum shear force is, of the nails is, okay, it's 50 pounds. All right, that's useful information, we'll probably use that. If the beam is simply supported and carries a 750 pound load at the center of its 12 foot span. Okay, so there's a couple things we need to take out of that sentence. Number one is that the beam is simply supported. And whenever we see a simply supported beam, Essentially what the question is referring to is we have a roller and a pin and we have uh, some kind of beam and uh, it's, it's on the ends of the beam, okay? It's, so the, the supports are on the ends of the, the beam. That's what simply supported means. And in this question, we have a 750 pound force acting in the center, okay? That's according to the question. So this is a 12 foot span. So this is six feet and this is six feet. Okay, so because this is a symmetrical, simply supported beam, all right, we can easily find this, the reactions and the reactions are going to obviously be uh, half of the 750 pounds, right? Because it's symmetrical, it's right in the center. The so reactions need to balance out the one external force that's in the middle uh, and that's, it's just as simple as that. So let's start with that. So we find that the reaction forces here are 375 pounds. All right, and we can just draw a very quick uh, shear diagram uh, representing that. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. We don't need the bending moment diagram for this question, we just need the shear. So let's start with that, okay. So, uh, we'll go like this. Okay, this is our shear, and what we're going to do is, we'll just start from this point here, A, okay? We'll call that A and we'll call that B. So at point A, we're gonna go up 375 pounds, okay? We're gonna go across to the center, all right? And then we're gonna go down 750, all right? To negative 375, we're gonna go across, and then we're gonna go back up to zero, okay? So this is 375 and negative 375, okay? All right, so uh, now that we have the shear force, or the maximum shear force acting on the beam, we can now move uh, to solving our I, which is our second step. And I'm gonna, just gonna show you a quick shortcut of how to calculate the moment of inertia of a perfectly symmetrical beam like this. Instead of uh, using the parallel axis theorem between uh, you know, these two pieces and, and translating it to the X, which is what you'd have to do, what we can do in this particular scenario, because it's equal in both the x and the y axis, is we can take the moment of inertia of this entire square, okay? Just 
just like that. We can take the moment of inertia of that and we can subtract, and I'll just put this in a different color for you so you can kind of visualize it. We can subtract this empty area, okay? Because if you think about it, what we're doing is when we take the moment of inertia of the whole thing, we're assuming that this is solid, right? But it's not, there's nothing there. It's empty space, it's an I-beam. So we need to subtract that after we're done, okay? So let's begin. The moment of inertia of the entire block is going to be eight, which is this dimension, plus two plus two. So we have 12 and height is always cubed when we're doing the X. Uh, and the base of this is times six divided by 12, right? Pretty simple. And then we're going to subtract these two pieces here. Okay, and we can just take it as one. This is six. Minus two is going to be four, so that's going to be our base. The height is eight, and that's cubed over 12. And that's a very simple way of doing a nice, easy problem like this. Uh, you might get this for a quiz, and you know, you don't want to spend a lot of time on it. You're probably only going to get 10 minutes or something to do a question like this, and we can't be uh, taken forever. Okay, so we arrive at a moment of inertia about the x-axis of 693.33 inches to the fourth power, okay? Now, that's that. And now, you know what? Uh, I think we're gonna stop this video here. Uh, we solved for I and we solved for our shear moment diagram. And uh, in the next video, uh, we are going to uh, determine the, the shear force transferred by the nails in uh, 12 inch length of the beam. So. Stay tuned for that.